Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. I'd like to continue finishing up the Zometry mill test part, but before I do what I'm gonna do next, I wanna review what we've done so far. So I have three setups, and if I hold my controller command down and select those setups, I'm gonna simulate, but instead of choosing the first setup, I'm gonna choose the second setup operation. So that we can see in the first setup, I re removed the bulk of the material around the outside of the part, and then I flip it over and I have that hat. This operation is just gonna remove the hat of material off so I can come into my Heimer and pick up on the machine services for an accurate X and Y. And then the only other operation that I have in my third setup is a half inch end mill that roughs out the bulk of the leftover material and gets me close to a net near shape when it's done. And what I'm gonna do is continue doing the holes and finishing of this part to wrap this up. I'm gonna start out by drilling my holes in this part. I'll choose a drill and I'm gonna go grab a spot, a spot drill. And so I'll come down to million tools inch is what I wanna look for. I'm gonna filter by spot drills and there's a quarter inch spot drill I'd like to use here. If I go down a little bit, I'll find the stainless steel drilling. I'm gonna select that. And then on my geometry tab, I'm gonna click on one of each of the holes that I wanna drill. So I wanna drill one of those holes and I'm gonna to choose to drill that hole right there as well. And then I'll select same size diameter and it'll grab all the rest of the holes for me. Now on the heights, I'm gonna cut from the hole top to the hole top for the bottom height. So I'm gonna choose hole top and hole top. But for the hole top offset for the bottom height, I'm gonna choose minus 0.03. So I'm gonna go 30,000 of an inch down and really all I wanna make sure is that the side of my tool isn't blowing out the side of the hole and it's looking good. And if you remember, I left 10 thousandths of an inch of stock on all my floors. So at this point, I'm gonna say 0 0.01 positive, just so the tool doesn't smash into that remaining stock too hard. And I can hit okay. So there's my spot drilling operation. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill this through hole right here. So I'm gonna start the drill and I'll drag this out a little bit better, bigger so you can see everything. Now, what I can do is I can just put my mouse over that hole and it'll tell me what size it is, so 0 0.313. I'm going to select from the whole milling tools, whole making tools inch, sorry, a drill, and I'm gonna come over here and filter by 5 16 and I'll just grab this uh, 5 16 drill right here, which will be good, and again, we'll choose stainless steel drilling. I'll select it for my geometry. I'm gonna click on this hole right here, the bottom hole, and then I'm gonna tell Fusion that I would like to auto merge whole segments, which will combine both of those whole segments together. Now on the heights, I could again, and I will accommodate that 0 0.01 stock that I left up on that floor. And for the bottom height, I'm gonna drill the tip through the bottom, and I'm going to drill through by 0.1 inches. That's a little deep, let's go 0 0.05. 0 0.1 would be okay, but I don't need to go that deep. And on the cycle tab here, I'm gonna do chip breaking partial retract. And I'll hit okay. And now I've got my through hole drilled. I'll work on drilling out my tap drill size holes now, so I'll do another drilling operation. I'm gonna go and select a tool, again, out of the hole making tools inch. And I'm gonna select a drill. Now I know that those holes are 440 holes, and I would like to use a a number 41 drill for stainless steel. So up here, I'm gonna type in 41 and it's gonna filter my choices and I can find that 096 drill. And I will come down and find my stainless steel drilling again and select it. I'm gonna choose one of the holes I wanna drill, select the same size diameter. And then on my heights tab, I'm gonna go from the whole top plus 0 0.01 to the whole bottom. I'm gonna drill the tip to the bottom. And again, I'll go 0 0.05 through. And on the cycle tab, one more time, I'll do a chip breaking partial retract and that will finish those holes up. So I'll hit okay. Last thing I wanna do is tap those. So I'm gonna again do a drilling operation. I'm gonna select a tool out of my hole making tools inch. This time I wanna filter by tap right hand and I can just go through and find it. I could have typed in number four, but here I can see a 440 is sitting right up there. I'm gonna select that, grab my holes one more time select the same size diameter. And then on my heights tab, one more time, 0 0.01, we'll, we'll drill the tip to the bottom and I'll go through say a hundred thousandths of an inch. I'm going quite a ways through material here. So on the tapping cycle, I'm gonna do tapping with chip breaking. 
So that'll do pack tapping on the way through. It's important to note that your post processor has to be set up and configured in order to do this tapping with chip breaking right. And I'll hit OK. So now I have all my holes done and made in my part. If I were to start the measure command and click on these two faces, you can see that I have 0.35 inches of material. And I'm probably going to use a 5 16 inch diameter end mill for this, which is 0.3125. Now, I'm a big fan of the adaptive clearing toolpath, but when the size of the tool is really close to the size of the area you're trying to get it to go through, it's not always the best use of the tool that you're trying to do. I don't want to go down too small of diameter to kind of make an adaptive toolpath work, so instead what I'm going to do to clear out the material between these two faces is I'm going to use a 2D contour toolpath to do this. So from the 2D menu, I'm going to select 2D contour, and I'm going to go grab a tool from my tutorial or from the uh, million tools library i should say million tools inch i want to filter by flat end mills and i'm going to go find this 5 16 flat end mill and i'm going to come down and i'm going to find the stainless steel slotting preset because that's basically what i'm going to be doing and i'll select that i'm going to go grab some geometry and I'm gonna tell it I would like to do a chain and an open chain and I'll just click on this edge. You can see it's still wrapping around the corner which is something that's currently being worked on. So what I'm gonna do on my computer is hold down the option on Windows or the Alt on Mac and I'm just gonna click on that edge. And I've got that edge selected. Now I'll give it a tangential extension distance here or a start and end extension I guess is what they call it now. I'll just call this 0.15 on each side and I'll hit OK, and I'm gonna do one more chain. I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna hold down my Option or Alt key on the other edge once I say I wanna do an open contour and hit OK. I forgot to add in my extension, so I'm just gonna come back and type in 0.15 for both of those and I can hit OK. Now you can see I get a toolpath that extends past part on each side. For the heights, I'm going to go to this from the stock top to the selected contours, that's fine. Um, in this case, though, I think what I can do is I can choose model top because I've already cleared out other material to the top of the model. And the reason I might wanna do that is because on the passes tab, I wanna turn on stock to leave. So if I do some math, the width of that slot is 0.35. The tool I'm using is 0.3125. If I subtract 0.3125 from 0.35, I'm left with 0 0.0375. If I divide that by two, the number that I get is 0 0.01875. So that would put that tool exactly down the center line of my part. For my axial stock to leave, which is floor stock, I'm gonna leave the same 10 thousandths of an inch of material that I did before. I'm gonna turn on multiple depths and I don't know exactly how far I want to go. Let's say I want to do 80 thousandths per step all the way down to the bottom. I want to use even step down so it, it figures out that each pass is the exact same. And then there's some other little minor changes that I can do along the way here. I can tell the tool it can go both ways since we're basically doing a slotting tool path. And I think the only other change I want to make is on the linking tab. I'm gonna change my lead out sweep angle and lead in sweep angle to be zero. So I can hit okay and see what I get for toolpath here. And everything looks pretty good. So if I were to go and simulate just that toolpath, what we'll see that it does is it just goes back and forth. It's leaving material on the walls, but it's roughing out the material between those two faces using a slotting toolpath rather than doing that as an adaptive. So now I've got the bulk material removed off of this part. I've left material on the faces down here and I have material on the walls anywhere where there's a, a vertical edge of the part. So I'm gonna use another sort of automated tool path called 3D in flat. So grab my 3D in flat and for the geometry, I'm gonna tell Fusion that it's gonna machine anything that's horizontal. Now, I haven't cleaned out this bottom face yet, so I can use my avoid touch services, and I can just come down here and click on that face, and now it won't try to machine down into that area. For the heights, I don't care. From the top of the part to the very bottom of the part, it's only gonna find horizontal surfaces. On the passes, I am gonna do one minor thing. I'm gonna turn on stock to leave, and set this value to for radial to be 0 0.01, but for axial, I'm going to do zero. I'm leaving a little bit on the walls to come and clean up. I want the tool to be able to cut the interior both ways so it doesn't just go one 
one direction. And the last thing I wanna do is I wanna machine over holes and I don't know exactly how big that hole is. I'm gonna call it an inch and just make sure that it goes directly over that hole. On the linking tab for my retraction policy, I'm gonna do a minimum retraction and I'll hit okay. And now I'll get a tool path that cleans up just the floor of my part without me having to do anything. The reason I left some stock on the walls is currently what this tool path does is it kind of wraps around and I'd rather just go straight in. And so I want to make sure it stays off of those walls. And I believe that this is something that is currently being looked at. So maybe in the future we'll get a slight improvement on this flat tool path. So now I've got my, my bottom face all cleaned up, but I don't have the edges along the walls cleaned up. So again, I'll do a 2D contour for that. Same tool. I'm gonna grab a different preset here this time though. I'm gonna choose a stainless steel finishing preset. And then for the geometry, I'm just gonna go around and select chains. So there's one of my chains. It's gonna be an open chain though and I can hit okay. I also want to extend this off of my part a bit, so I'm gonna do point 0.1 for all of these. So I'll hit okay. Now I wanna do another chain. Again, it's gonna be an open chain. I'll grab the next edge. See if I can get it to do that in one shot. There it is, so we're gonna, it's got the two edges right there. Again, I wanna do my point 0.1 extension, and I'll hit okay. I'll do another chain. And this is gonna be my next chain and it's going all the way around. Open chain, so that's good. And I'll say my point one extension one more time. And then the last one, one last chain. And I'll come around and just gonna make sure that it grabs the whole way around this corner. And it does. I'll do my point one extension. I'll hit okay. And then I'm gonna make a couple changes. On the passes tab, I'm gonna tell it that I would like, I guess I don't change it there. On the linking tab, I'm gonna tell it I wanna keep the tool down. And then instead of having a 90 degree, I wanna do a zero degree lead in. Now, when I hit okay, the tool should be pretty efficient as it goes around and does its path. So let's check out what this one does. I'll simulate this and we can see it's gonna plunge down. It's gonna wrap around my part, finishing that off. Wraps around the next wall, stays down, wraps around and then it wraps around the last part. So I'm pretty happy with the finishing of all the walls there at that point. I'm gonna exit the simulation. And the last thing I wanna do is I would need to take care of this bore. So I'm gonna do a 2D and bore. I'm gonna use the same tool for my geometry. I'm just gonna click on the face. And there I get a preview of what that boring tool path is gonna look like. For the heights, it's gonna go from the top of the hole that I selected to the bottom of it. So it's grabbed the heights automatically based on the wall that I selected. And then on the passes tab, I'd like to do a finishing pass here of 0 0.005. That should be good. On the linking tab, I wanna keep the tool down and I'd also like the lead to the center. Now you can see the tool kind of plunges down and I'll hit okay. And if we take a second to look at this, maybe we'll do a simulation on this. And I'm looking for green surfaces. So here we're gonna see our, our 3D adaptive that goes out and, and roughs the majority of the material out. I'll go a little faster on this so we don't have to watch the whole simulation again. Now we'll go through and spot drill all the holes on this part. Drill the through holes, do my tap drill size holes, come back in with my tap. We'll slot out the majority of the material left between those two faces. We'll finish the floor up nicely with the flat tool path, leaving just a little bit on the walls to come back and clean up with the 2D uh, contour tool path. Now we'll see that 2D contour tool path come back and clean those walls up. And then we'll do the bore operation to clean up that hole. And that's where I'm gonna leave this video. So all we're gonna have left to do in the next video is some servicing work to get these faces done. I don't wanna go too long in this video and I promise I won't wait as long to put out the last video that wraps up doing the servicing operation on there. Love to hear what you guys I have to say, please leave your comments like you've been doing below in the comments field below. And as always, thanks for watching.